Hey guys, Sean uh, here with uh, episode 14 of the Heavy Shield. <clears throat> this one's called uh, Taking a Knee fa Facing Out. Uh, basically knowing your limitations and um, recognizing them, knowing when to push through them and when to not push through them. Um, something that kind of brought this on uh, recently is this story of Simone Biles uh, the Olympic hopeful, U.S. Olympic hopeful, uh, face of U.S. Olympics, uh, specifically in gymnastics, recently bowing out um, uh, after the finals due to uh, what, what she called mental health issues. Uh, and basically what it boils down to, as far as I can tell, again, I, I'm not a pro on this, I'm not an insider, um, what it, what it boils down to is, is, is the, the stress of, of all the pressure uh, of performing and everyone putting all this these hopes and dreams on, on her her back. Um, not just for, like I said, for, for gymnastics, but U.S. gymnastics and U.S. Olympic uh, gold medal uh, as a whole. Uh, it just something in there uh, and again, I, we will never know the whole story about exactly why she, uh, she bowed out. But at one point, um, uh, I, I heard she, she said something about she didn't know where she was in the middle of her flips. She, she just lost her equilibrium or her uh, point of reference. She just, it, something was off mentally. Physically, she was top of the game it just mentally something was off um so she uh decided to bow out and say hey i'm done rest rest of the u.s gymnastics team you you go forward and win the gold um which they ended up i think i think when winning silver or on par to win silver at this point um but to her credit uh, Simone stuck around and uh, cheered on her team. She didn't just, yeah, I can't do this anymore, fuck off, and she uh, popped smoke back home. No, she stuck around um, and damn the consequences and damn what everybody thought about her decision. Uh, she stuck around on the sidelines, not hiding in the, in the locker room, on the sidelines, off the mat, and uh, cheered on the rest of her team, uh, rested away. Um, and I, I've, we, we've seen a lot of people giving her flack for this. You know, we got to push through. Um, oh, boo hoo! This is all you got to do is you got to do some flips. And you know what? To those of you that have never been in that situation, and um, physically, mentally. Uh, and you're sitting here shitting on her decision to uh, to bow out um, because for whatever reason, um, fuck you. Just a big giant fuck you. Okay, she made a decision uh, based on her limitations, physical, mental, doesn't matter what it was. Uh, combination thereof. And she decided to do what's best for her team and what's best for her and her career in the long run. Is me going out there right now at this moment in time and potentially injuring myself because I'm not in the right space mentally going to fuck me up and potentially lead to a career-ending injury? Maybe. Uh, it's, it's, it's a high... High, uh, highly possible uh, uh, effect of what what she, she could have uh, uh, gone through had she just pushed through this, pushed through her pain, physically, mentally, whatever. Um, she decided to take the long view, uh, or or just take the short view. It, it, it doesn't matter. What whatever view she took. Um, it was the right one because she wasn't the right space mentally. Um, 
so for for anyone saying that she made the wrong call she should have pushed through and um you know all our hopes are riding on you how dare you you know go fuck yourself put yourself in her fucking spot um the, the way I, I i internalize this or, or can put, put this into perspective is uh um my uh, last deployment, um, I, I was out in the middle of nowhere with, with the Cav Squadron, or Cav Troop, sorry, uh, just a troop and, and uh, um, mortar platoon, infantry mortar, mortar platoon. And there was one giant mountain uh, that we had to, uh, on occasion, once a week, walk up a platoon. It was just rotated through which platoon would walk up this giant mountain. Uh, we were already at around 4,000 feet above sea level. We had to walk up about another 1,500 feet above sea level to the top of this mountain uh, to check on this um, uh, Afghani uh, army section that was supposed to be providing overwatch from this mountain. Um, and uh, our third week there, I was the old man, the, the old medic, oldest medic uh, on the FOB, and uh, I said, hey, man, I, I got to take my turn. Uh, I can't just send these young dudes out there every every week uh, to break their dicks off, climb up this fucking mountain. It was a ball buster. Even, even you know, these uh, infantry dudes that were in wicked good shape were coming down going, holy shit. Um, so I, I couldn't, in good conscience, send these two younger medics up there all the time. So I took my turn up one, and I almost fucking died. Uh, it broke my dick off. I'm telling you, uh, about three quarters of the way up, uh, I, I, I finally stopped, and uh, the platoon leader goes, "Holy fuck!" Somebody else carried Doc's aid bag, and. Then they wonder, oh, fuck, okay, maybe he's carrying more weight than we thought, but um, I finally made it to the top, and uh, I, there was no oxygen up there. I wanted to fucking die. I literally wanted to fucking suck start my M4, just versus the thought of climbing all the way back down, 1,500 feet, just fucking two degrees of fucking incline just ah just the thought of climbing back down i was like get a goddamn bird up here now but of course that wouldn't happen um so but i f i made it down and i i made it back to the aid station but for the next two days i was fucking worthless i couldn't i could barely walk uh i felt like fucking bambi like you know a brand new doe just Ooh, I just I, I I could not walk. Um, so after that, I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let these two young assholes climb that goddamn mountain. Um, I I recognize my limitations. Uh, if I had pushed forward and said, no, fuck this, fuck this, I can do it. Uh, and try to climb that mountain again, um, I would have failed physically one uh possibly mentally two uh and then i would have been in no shape whatsoever to help anybody on that patrol uh or thereafter for the next month or so uh just because of physical and mental injuries um i would have been ashamed in front of this whole uh infantry troop um it just it it would have been bad on so many levels um i was a senior medic and if i had failed physically because i was dehydrated you know i had to get uh evac to to a hospital um i could have never come back and saved face uh it would just it Everybody else's opinions of you really matters when you're a line medic, more so than a lot of other jobs. Um, if if you're a line medic, 
you know, combat medic with the infantry or cavalry or armor or whatever, uh, their opinion of you matters a lot. Um, and how they, and that, and that dictates how they treat you, uh, you know, as, as an equal or as, as a, as an inferior, um, do they want you out on patrol, uh, so on and so forth. So I didn't want it to get to that point. So after my first trip up that, up and down that mountain, I said, I've had my trip. I made it physically, mentally cool. I'm done. I don't want to put myself in that position ever again. Um, and I, and I think that's from, again, I, I could be totally wrong. Uh, but from what little I've seen of what Simone Biles has been going through, I think that's kind of w what she's going through is, is that she, she went, she ran up against that wall physically or, uh, mentally, emotionally, whatever that wall was. And she said, Oh shit. If I hit that wall again or try and burst through that wall, uh, the effects of that could be worse than me just stopping at the wall. Because I got the, I got a team behind me, uh, I got people uh, not just teammates, but I, I got a whole country behind me, depending on me and and, and uh, my abilities. So um, her her decision to to step aside and um, still stay and support the rest of her team, I. Simone Biles, I you will always have my undying gratitude and, and um, respect for for knowing your limitations. Um, uh, I you know back in the day uh, when I was with Land Infantry, uh, young young privates uh, were doing twelve mile ruck marches every Thursday. Um, I, I, afterwards, we, we'd all all the medics would congregate in the aid station and wait for the parade of blisters and stuff and a lot of these would, would be um you know uh e5s e6s long long time guys you know have been in infantry for, for a few years and they just come with these giant fucking blisters you know just starting from the bottom of their heel running all the way up towards towards their achilles tendon um, you know, talking about like four or five inch diameter blisters that would just pop mid mid ruck march, and the, some of these guys they, they would come up up the aid station with blood just pouring out of the top of their boots uh, from these burst blisters, and we were going, "What the fuck are you doing, man? What? Why?" And they go, "Well, I, I can't show weakness in front of my guys." I gotta keep pushing through. Well, you know what? There's a fine line between hard ass and dumb ass. And motherfucker, you just put on a cape and flew right the fuck over that line. So I'm glad. I I hope you're happy that the fact that you walking normally for the rest of your life is now in jeopardy because you just uh, blew this giant, you know six inch diameter blister uh, so uh, yeah it's it just blows my mind I, I yeah part of me is, is is all about that ho ho push through uh, push past the pain um, dig deep you know I mean yeah we all have to get to that point at, at some point we, we, we you got to dig deep push past the pain um, maximum effort right but there all also has to be that point where we we have to stop and go okay if I push farther if I keep pushing faster if I keep pushing harder um, is this gonna cause me irreparable harm in the future is this going to put the mission at risk? Is this going to push, put um, my fellow battle buddies to my left and right at risk? Um, in that, that's the ultimate thing. Is is yeah, go hard, go fast, go strong. But here's the other the other saying: slow is smooth, smooth is fast. 
right? There's always that other one, violence of action. Yeah, that sounds fucking cool as shit. Violence of action. Boom, kick in her door. Fucking go balls at a wall, right? But then there's the the uh, opposite side of that coin, which is just as important as the other side of that coin. Two sides make a coin, right? The other side of the coin is slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Right? So, you know, know your limitations. That's what it boils down to. Um, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't, doesn't matter if we're talking physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Um, it doesn't matter what aspect of our lives we're talking about. It, it, it's all, it applies to all aspects. Know your limitations. Know when it's okay to say, hey, I'm done. I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to take a breath. Take a knee and face out. Right? Um, and know when to applaud that. Oh, fucking sorry, Nat. Uh, <laughs> know, know when to applaud that. And, and in, in this specific instance, Simone Biles, I fucking applaud you. I love you. I hope this lesson takes effect and spreads and everybody realizes that it's okay to quit once in a while. If the cost of going forward far outweighs the price of moving forward or stopping. So, uh, again, I hope this, uh, hope this video has helped some folks out there. Um, I, I know it applies to me. Hope it, I'm pretty sure it applies to a lot of vets out there. Um, uh, please, uh, click and subscribe down below. Um, no, oh, sorry, down below. Uh, it's the only way this video can get out there, this channel can get out there, this message, uh, help other vets. So uh, thanks, and I'll talk to you guys again. Bye.